Okay, so uh, this if part, this first if part, checks to see did we get an error. If we did get an error, it blanked the fields, gave a console log output to the developer, and then a pop-up to the user that CRM doesn't exist. Well, the other possible result is the positive result. That will be our else. So in the else part is where we will write the um, we will write the, the the code the pouch code that updates the class. And actually, if we back up, just to remind ourselves a while ago, if we back up to line thirty four, line thirty three is where we created the a class variable which holds id underscore id title and inst. And uh, those are the three fields of the one class. We define it there. Then we've got db.put. Put that class into the database, basically. Pouch uses a dot .put when it creates a record in the database or when it updates a record in the database. So there's no extra, for example, dot .update. It's the same dot .put. So with one little difference. So we'll see here now, when we go back to else, Okay, inside of else, line 118, we'll do db.put, open close parentheses, semicolon. And um, let's just put, uh, this is a placeholder, let's just put zzz comma, function, open close, parentheses, open close, curly brace. This is not what really we're going to try to put into the database, just a quick placeholder. I just want to write the full syntax for it. We're going to put something, we're going to get a callback function. What do, we, what do we do with these callback functions? How are they complete? What's inside function? Error, Error comma, result. I just want to write this syntax. So we're trying to put a class and we'll get either an error or result. We've seen this over and over. That's just the way PouchDB is, which is good. It's consistent, isn't it? So back at the top, uh, we created a variable called a class. And that a class held the ID, the title, and the instructor. Um, we could do the same thing here in that we captured those three variables and then put them into a class, and then right here would be a class. But just to show you, the raw way is this. Remove that placeholder, and then we will do open close curly braces. We'll put the raw JSON data back into the database, instead of creating an extra variable that's going to hold the data, why don't we just put the data directly into the database? This is JSON. It's curly braces. It's JSON. So just to make it readable, I'm going to break that onto two lines. This JSON object, as we've seen a few times before, we're breaking it into two lines. We will have key value comma, key value comma, key value, like before. So we've got tab in there, we've got quotes underscore ID, colon. This line is not complete, but I'm going to put the next line. We've got quotes title, colon, quotes inst. We have to use the same fields that we made up previously, back on line 20-something. ID, title, inst. If we call this instructor, Pouch won't know. There's no field called instructor the first time you created it, so we have to keep it as inst, as we have at the top, colon. The big difference here, when we try to update a record, is that also we need one more field. This is in quotes underscore rev. The revision. This is a new revision of the original data. 
So we didn't create this previously. I'll show you where it's coming from. We didn't create it, but it was creating it for us all the time. Pouch is automatically creating a revision number and keeping track of the updates for us. This also needs them the colon. So to update a record, it's a, it's a put again with the same fields and an extra field, underscore rev. Those are the only two reserved pouch um, keys, underscore ID and underscore rev. These are the ones you can make up as many as you want, spell them however you want, but those two are required, especially when you make an update. So then that means, based on based on what we've captured up there, put that into the ID, put that into the title, into the inst. So here then it's dollar, the CRN, capital CRN, because that's how we spelled it up there. At the end of that line, comma. Remember the, the JSON format? Key value, comma, key value, comma. So the next one is dollar the title, comma. Whatever the person typed, we saved it in that variable, put it back into the database. Like spell it right, for example. Comma at the end there. And then inst is a dollar um, the instructor, comma. Now the rev one, it was there all along. If you ever noticed in your console when we were adding stuff to the database, I'm just going to add something here, 222, add class. That string of gibberish, every time you added something to the database, it's the object, OK, true, ID, 22, whatever you wrote, rev, blah, 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 blah. blah. That long string there is also being saved for us automatically under rev. So here then what we're going to write, we need to tell pouch this is the ID in question with the revision, with the last revision number. We're going to change it, give us a new revision number. So here will be result dot underscore rev. Result comes from up there at line uh, 110. Error result. When there's an error, pouch gives us back stuff, information. And we can see it here. Whenever there's a positive result, it also gives us back data. And in part of that data is a rev, a revision number. So result of rev. That's like in the JSON format that we've seen before, way back when we did that social, that project of social. We had social dot URL. That was the URL value in the social object. We had uh, social dot name. That was the name in the social object. So underscore rev, it was there all along, and now we're saying, okay, just get that value and put it back into the database. And basically with these two things, ID and rev, we are able to update the database. No comma at the end there because it's the end of the JSON data. Those curly braces end right there. So at this point, there's the same sort of result. We're trying to update the data in the database, there could be an error or a result. So we will do an if-else to check. Was there an error? Was there a positive result? So I'm going to break the curly braces of the function. <laughs> Move those curly braces down. A couple lines. So now you've got all of this here, curly parentheses, curly, curly, curly parentheses. This is what was up there, and that parenthesis, that curly brace closes the function. 
the parenthesis closes the put. And then inside of the function, we will do another if else block. So inside of function, the callback function of error or result, we've got if else, curly's, we had curly right, and now we've got another one here. So we'll curly, curly, whatever, curly brace, parentheses, another curly brace, because that one closes else. So inside of that if, we're going to check for an error. And if there's an error, we'll put it into the console. And we'll pop it up for the user. This if else is dealing with uh, with dealing with directly updating the database. So either there was an error or not. If there was no error, that means now the database internally is a little different from what the user is seeing on screen. That table on screen is still showing that that class is there misspelled. So we need to redraw the table. Show classes function. Show classes looks at what's in the database and shows it on screen. So we just change the database. If we're this deep into the code, we've just changed the database. Therefore, we need to change the table on the screen. We need to redraw the table on the screen. And then to see what that kind of gives us, we'll also put it in the console with result. What is that result for properly updating the database? So check this code here, and then we can run it. I'll run it in a moment, and I'll show you what it's supposed to look like. Just check your code. Let's see. I'm going to save and run that. Show classes. I've got class 1, 2, 3, which I misspelled. So I'm going to type in the first box 1, 2, 3. That's a class that exists. I actually wanted to type English, so I'll spell that right. And I'll write Smith. I'll click Update Class. In the blink of an eye, everyone remember that used to say English, right? Now it says English, and my console says, okay, true. And now that says two, blah, blah, blah. It would say one, blah, 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 because of the first version of the data. Now it's two. I'm going to change that one again. I'm going to go to one, two, three, and say that's actually English one with Instructor Smith, update class, Visually, it says, here's English 1. Internally, it's the third version of the data, the third revision. And then, whoops, I also spilled class, misspelled on, one, on class 125. 125, Japanese, is actually, obviously, instructor Kajiwara. 
And so update that, that gets fixed, and now that's version 2 of that object. Raise your hand if that worked. Okay, good. What are we going to do here? The division number, though, it's like a projection number of the we only need the revision number when we do updates. We don't need it for anything else really, it's just it just works internally, mm -hmm. but we, we need it at this point when we're going to do an update, when we're going to put data into the same into the same field in the database, we need a revision to tell it, yes, we're updating, it's a new revision of old data. So I just like to learn like the, another way to double check the if uh, somebody uh, no, it's not smart enough for any sort of that security. It's just enough for us to. That's what the that's what the pouch specification needs in order to update a database. Watch this. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete rev completely. So the code is still the same, basically, except for rev. I'm, I know I've got class one, two, three, and I'm going to change that to English two with Instructor Smith, update class. We get the weird result here. But then the code is saying conflict, document update conflict. We haven't given that revision, so it thinks we want to add a brand new class, one, two, three. Not a revision of an existing one. That's where it says there's a conflict. So we're saying, no, we are updating the original one. Here's our, here's our, here's our ID, here's our, our ID card, the rev. And then it lets us. Now with Rev, we're saying, yeah, we're we're talking about what we what we think we're talking about. Go ahead and update it. Like on this one here, two two two. Okay, two two two, because it, it has to be this is the unique value, and this is gonna be English two with instructor Jones. And I've updated it, that's version two of the data. Question. Yeah. Well, yes to both. Um, it is possible that we can then search uh, through the database to find what we want exactly. And uh, I believe we can do it both through Pouch and definitely also through jQuery Mobile. So jQuery Mobile has a cool built in search kind of feature. So, um, yeah, we've got all of this data, and it would be very useful for us to, to hone in on one part of the data. We can do that. But how to do it? It's going to require more code. Now, I'll break if you need help in just one moment, but let me finish my thought here. This works, but what if I'm trying, again, what if I misspelled it? Class 122, and that should be English um, 3. And no, let's do it like this. Let's say it, I'm trying to update class one, two, three, and I wrote English because I have to re I have to re put back into the database existing data, and that's actually um, Smith Junior. So I'm trying to update class one, two, three. It's actually Smith Junior. If I try to update that error, the class doesn't exist. Okay, so there's some user error there. The user has to type this in themselves. Uh, what we're going to do after I, we make sure everyone's working, we're going to set this up so that if you click, uh, if you click a button on that particular uh, class, it'll automatically fill in the fields here, and then you just edit what needs to be edited. It's way better, isn't it? So we're going to do that in one moment, but let's make sure everyone at this point so far, it works. Anyone need any help for it to work at this point? Okay, here's my code so far. Just one moment, and then we'll, we'll just click and, and edit what already exists.
Okay, so um, the idea is we're going to um, we're going to have an icon, like a little pencil icon. You click the pencil, and then it automatically populates those fields, and then you just update them as necessary. Pencil. How do we make a pencil? jQuery Mobile. We don't have jQuery Mobile in this project, so it'll just be a simple link. But when we put it into our project and do jQuery Mobile, it'll become a pencil. So I want a new column on the end to have the little edit pencil. So that means we need to slightly edit our uh, we need to slightly edit our our table to allow for that. Um, But because it'll it'll make more sense when we've got it in jQuery Mobile, no, well, let's go ahead and try it. I was gonna say we should do it when we've got it into jQuery Mobile, but I think we can still do it. Um, let's go. Let's back up to our. Let's see, way back, um, where we're building the table, which is line 74, uh, 75. This is where we're actually starting to build the table. Line 75. We started the table, and we started a table row, table heading for the CRM, the title, the instructor. We're going to need a new column for our edit, our edit pencils. So line 75, you should see th slash th instructor, and then slash tr for the whole row. In between the final TH and the final TR, we're going to add another TH pair. 
table heading, or table header, th slash th. That'll give us a new column. I'm not actually going to write anything in that column because we're going to have icons, but oftentimes tables get weird when there's nothing in a cell. They collapse. So we're going to create an empty space here, and there's a character. So inside of the ths, we'll type um, uh, ampersand nbsp semicolon. We saw this when we had ampersand copy semicolon that creates the copyright symbol, but we're doing nbsp, which is non-breaking space, basically an empty space. Because remember in HTML we can press space, 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 and it'll ignore it. But here we're going to force a space, an empty space. So we're creating a brand new column with a non-breaking space. Brand new column. Um, th. Um, so then, in the for statement, we're then building the next row. A new row starts, tr, and then a new td for the id, and then title, and then instructor. We're going to need another td on the next line for the edit, for the edit button. So let's create a new line 80. We're going to create a new line 80, and so very similar in quotes. We're going to close TD and start another TD. This closed TD takes the place of that one down there because we started a TD to display the instructor, and we closed the TD. Then we're going to start another TD for the edit, and then that will close the TD, the cell, for edit. So we'll do plus, space plus, just because that's what we've got here, plus something plus, and then it continues, plus something plus, and then it continues. Quotes. It'll say edit. Later it'll become a button, a nice little pencil. But right now it'll say edit. And in and because in the future and from the past we know that a a button in jQuery Mobile uh, is an href. Remember a, a, a link. So we're gonna wrap around the a tag right here. This text will become a link. Later on it will become a button, but here it's going to be a link. href equals single quotes, pound sign. It's going to act like a link, but it's not going to go anywhere. Remember, this is the dummy link from a while ago. It doesn't go anywhere, but it just acts like a link. It's an ahref. And to reference it in the JavaScript, oftentimes we've been using an ID because there was only one of a particular thing in the whole project. There was only one um, input box, there was only one button and such. But here we're going to have several of these edit pencils. There's going to be an edit pencil on every single row. So when we want to reuse something over and over, instead of an ID, we use what? A class. So we'll further add class here equals single quotes. And let's call it uh, btn edit. So there will be several of these edit buttons, one on each row of a class. Um, let's save it and run it, and let's see that it looks like how I expect. You're going to have a brand new row, I mean a brand new column, at the end, and then you'll see edit, 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 edit along the very last row. What is this right here? Make 
make sure it's between slash th and slash tr. D-O-T-H. Pair. Pair, right? Pair. Mm -hmm. And then it's ampersand N B S P semicolon. Were there two inspectors? Or just one? Just one. Just one. It's supposed to look like this. A brand new column because we added a new th pair. Nothing in it except the empty space. And then edit, edit, edit. There are links because they've been added to each individual row. Did everyone get it? What's that? They're blue because the dummy link of this pound symbol, it's, it's, we've already visited it, so to speak. So it's blue. Question. Yes. Why might my uh, structure box is going to drop down underneath instructions instead of beside instructions? Let's check, but most likely it was that th pair. Also, um, how wide do you have your screen? If you got it really small, it might also break the screen. Well, then you don't Okay, so eventually these will be cool little buttons because of jQuery Mobile, but at the moment they'll simply say edit. So you're going to click on any one of these, edit, and then they w and then it will automatically po uh, populate these boxes for the user. Then they don't have to type it and type it wrong. 
maybe they're trying to edit Japanese and they're trying to spell the instructor's name correctly, and they did, but then they misspell Japanese, so they have to edit it again. So with these edits, these will automatically fill in. So the way we'll do that is we'll scroll, we'll scroll back down all the way to the bottom where all of these event handlers are happening. Um, we're going to do something very similar to here in that we've got some sort of parent element and some sort of child element. Um, so line uh, 141, next line here. We're going to start the same sort of syntax. Um, like this. Just start our syntax like that. They're very reminiscent of the previous two. Let's write something like that. Okay, so the so the the first reference right here will be the same as before. Actually, the result, that whole div that we created way at the beginning, which was just a humble empty placeholder div, actually now has a lot of a lot of usage and a lot of meaning, doesn't it? It's holding all of our data and it's allowing us also to to update the data and such. So we're still going to expect a click. What's that? Hashtag the result. Yes, good eye. Hashtag the result. Yes, because it's the ID. So pound sign the result. Then the variation is right here. I just put some placeholders, Z, Z, Z. Here's, here's the difference. In quotes, we're going to write TR. No hashtag, no dot for a class. Um, jQuery. We all along we've been using it to target individual specific things throughout the project. jQuery is powerful enough to actually let us edit multiple things at once or target multiple things. There are right now about five or so, three or four TRs in my project. Each one of these is a TR. This whole this whole thing across is a TR. That's a table row. The first one's a TR, another TR, another TR, another TR, another TR. So we can do this where we can click on any one of these rows, but it'll know that it's this particular row because we've clicked on this particular row. So here we're just saying basically on any row that we click on in our table, do the following. This was saying on this exact box inside of this result, do something. Here we're saying on any of the rows that we click on, do something. And then we'll specify on the next line the particular one we clicked on. This one's going to work a little bit different. We could do it also as, as a function, but instead I will keep it in here. We've been doing this over and over that we put all of our code in a function but we could write the code here also raw. Either or, I'm just showing both ways. So here's another way. Um, in this next line here, we need to capture the particular row of data here. If I were to click on the first edit, this row is full of 1, 2, 3, English 1, Smith, and Edit. But I want to click on this edit so that jQuery knows 
one, two, three, and English and Smith. So we will create some variables here. Old CRN. Because we're gonna there's an old one that we're gonna update. And that comes from this is a new one, and it's very powerful, but in a sense also limited. This. And this is very different than what we've seen before, where we've had the dollar, uh, we've had the pound sign, and we've had quotes. No quote, no pound sign. There's a special reserved um, keyword in, in jQuery called this. And it's literally, what did you click on? I clicked on this. And so this is referencing the thing that we had just clicked on, this whole row. This whole row can be short, shorthanded down to this. But the problem still is, which this do we mean? Do we mean, do we mean 1, 2, 3, English, or Smith? Well, this is the first item in the row, the second item in the row, the third item in the row. 1, 2, 3. And, we, and when we count on the computer and such, we start counting from zero. So actually, this item here is zero, one, two, three. Zero, one, two, three. Zero, one, two, three. Zero, one, two, three. Each row starts with zero, one, two, three. So in this variable, old CRN, I want to save this first element of the row. So further here, we're going to say dot find, open close parentheses. And then in quotes, this is pretty advanced here, td colon eq parentheses zero. That is shorthand that says, in this row, find the first um, cell. Find a cell that's equal to zero. So basically, the first cell of this row, save that information in this variable. Actually, at the end, dot text. We're not using dot val. Dot val is only for input boxes. Those are not input boxes. Those are just plain old HTML. So give me the text in that particular cell, the one that equals to the first cell, zero, the first cell. That's the find part related to this row that I've clicked on, save it in that variable. I want to do that two more times, so actually I don't want to semicolon that. I want to comma that, because then the next one, same thing. Dollar old title equals the same thing. Dollar this dot find dot text And here we're saying, give me the zeroth item in the row. Well, what do you think the next one is? One. one, the first item. So that's in quotes, td colon equal to index one, which is the second item, because we count from zero. So now, give me the text of the second cell of this row and save it to that variable. one more time. At the end, comma, dollar old instructor. I'm just going to type inst. I don't want to type the whole instructor and misspell it. Uh, equals dollar this dot find something text and then I'll close that. Okay, I want the third item in the row. Zero, one, two. In quotes, TD, that's the cell, 
colon equal to the second index position, which is the third item. And then that line ends with a semicolon, so be careful here. I did the same thing, comma, comma, semicolon, because I'm reusing the one bar instead of doing bar, bar, bar. To see if we're on the right track, console log, just like before. Dollar old CRN, comma, dollar old title, comma, dollar inst, uh, old inst. And this is just, again, we may be writing the code correctly, but remember, there's syntax errors, there's logic errors. I would not know if I'm if I'm uh, writing my algorithm properly without some feedback. And console is one of the best ways to get feed give feedback to myself. If, this, if, if the console is suddenly saying undefined, well then that's telling me. It doesn't know what old CRN is. Oh, I misspelled old CRN. Or I didn't type EQ here, I typed EG. Be careful here, this is EQ equals, not EG, EQ equals. The purpose of this console log is to, it's not going to tell you there's, a, there's an error on line 43, column 7. What is EG? These, these error messages, unfortunately, are still not smart enough to tell us what the real problems are. They're, the best they can do is guide us to a line number, and then we look, and that line looks okay. Well, they might be a little bit above that line, because still the, the debugger is not smart enough to tell us exactly the error. Because uh, it, it might it might not tell us you know it might tell us eg undefined um, or it might not it might think it is a real a real thing in some other language. Question. I got an error on line one forty five. Uncorrect syntax. No. Okay. Let's check that. Save and run this. It's not going to work just yet, but I want to see if the console shows. Click on any of those edit buttons, and in the console, you should see what the what that row is up there. I mean, it doesn't tell much. I mean, it just tells as you click on a road. But how do you know it? Which road did you just click on? You know, sometimes you say before I click on the road, you know, the one before I click on it. But how do you know which road if you just click on it? How do you know which road if you just click on it? You have one, two, three, or one, two, three, one, two, three. Why is outputting me thing? 
บทอะไรอันนี้ในยูเอสไอค่ะเราคือตีตัวที่ชอบตัวนี้ไม่ไม่ดี
All right, so I think this is pretty cool. Um, we're, we're able to click on any one of these edit buttons. They all have a class instead of a unique ID. That's something that we can do. And on any one of these that we click on, it knows which one we mean because of this that reserved this command. So if I click on the second one, my console output then shows um, that I clicked on the second one. And it shows 124 Spanish Alvarez because that's the console. Show what the CRN is, then the title, then the instructor. And we're getting it from the zeroth position, the first position, the second position. We didn't say anything about 3 because we don't care about what's on 3, which is going to be just the button itself. Yes? The button really, we used to use the whole row, right? Yes. So that button really doesn't count. Exactly. <laughs> but we need something there for the user to think that they're clicking on. Okay. When it's a pencil, In it'll be... Exactly. So if they miss and they click right here, it's still going to work. If they miss and they click right here, it's still going to work. You know, anywhere that they click on the row, that's what we're saying here. Anywhere that we click on the row. But specifically, give me the data of the first position, second, and third. So. I have yes. a quick question. You said anywhere that they click on the row, can you be, or can you specify exactly which, well, you were saying table data and you are saying zero, one, two, three, but you're saying that's what can be, or that's what was shown. Is that correct? Or is that correct? So it'll show uh, the table data, the zero table data, which would be one, the CRN, zero, one, two, or one, one two, three. three. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That's what it will show. But what if you just wanted to click on? say, the, uh, English 1, um, and you only wanted to show, uh, see, or you only wanted to show the title part, just the English 1, not the whole row. Well, we, we would be able to do that, and this is one way to do it, because here we're making it show all three, uh -huh. but we could just have it say title. So still, anywhere that we click on the row, but it'll know that it's the, the title, because it's the, the first one there, and then just display the title. Okay. Um, but I'm pretty sure we can be that specific that if you clicked on English, yeah, you know. Yeah, maybe TD, in, in the quotes it said TR, or the result on the guy right there. TD, would that maybe be more specific? And then, or, and then maybe add more information such as TD um, equal to zero, or, or sorry, equal to one, or something like that. So it would be the title. I think the issue with that is that it'll still sort of behave in the same way as, in, as, a, as it being a whole um, row. Okay. Because. Um, when we when we don't specify a class or an ID, specifically an ID, it's going to try to r reference or collect as much of that as on screen. Um, so if we have another TD on another on another table, for example, it might also grab that data. Um, so I'd have to look to see maybe what's the best way to do it with TD, but just to see what happens. Let me just put a TD. You know, I know it works right now, and maybe I'm curious what happens with a TD. I haven't checked it, and we'll see right now. So I'm going to click down here. Nothing. <laughs> I want to click on English. But maybe you have to be specific with what the TD should be. Because you're just saying table data. Well, which table data are you using? Which data do you mean? But notice we mean which one by this. Oh, I see. Gotcha. Okay. That's how we're specifically talking about this particular row instead of any row. Okay. Um, so I don't, I don't know if we can. What's that? The uh, this, the this is specifying 
um, this row. If I have tr, it means the whole this row, because I can have seven rows. So this specifies the tr. When I've read it on td, it's confused somehow, and then it's not displaying anything on these positions, because now there are no more positions of td. It's kind of weird to think about. But it would be logical that, yeah, if I put td, why isn't it that specific? I'm not sure. Maybe we can maybe we can put this in here already, but notice how we have to be specific with this to say, within this row, let's find the first item, the first td. Okay. If we were to put td equals zero here, that wouldn't work because then it would always be the first right. item in the cell. So with some more research, you know, asking on Stack Exchange, maybe someone can figure out a way, an algorithm. Um, this probably it could be this particular this particular solution would seem to f fix our particular problem, not everyone's. But um, you know, I think the I think over at the Google Plus JavaScript forum, they're also very helpful there. Stack Exchange, Google Plus, where we can ask people that might have an, another idea, um, different ways to do the same thing. So at this point, if we've confirmed that we are able to capture the data in those rows and parse them into individual variables and display it in the console, let's actually then populate these fields. That's the whole point. I want to take these things and put them in these things so that the person doesn't misspell something. Um, so after console, next line, line 146, here's where we um, kind of do what we did up here. Up here in line 113 to 116, we blanked out the cells. Instead of blanking them out, let's fill them with those temporary variables. So we'll write it longhand first, dollar, quotes, pound update, CRN, capital CRN, that's the name of that input box, dot val, open close parentheses, and in the parentheses, no quotes, dollar old CRN. This variable is holding that, we saw it here in console, <coughs> but now we're going to change the value of that input box to that um, that variable. <clears throat> so you want to do the same thing on the next two. You could copy and paste from above and just edit, but if copying and pasting does, doesn't give you exactly what you want, you, you want to do it longhand. Dollar old title and see this should seem consistent because we invented it. We invented update CRN, update title, update instructor. <clears throat> so that's a cool thing. When we make our own variables, when we make our own functions, we can name them what we want so that they make sense to us. When I wrote this, this made sense to me. It may not make sense to you, but when you do your own version of the app, you can always change it. Update instructor. That's a little bit that we didn't quite keep consistent. We used inst in most places in the app, and for some reason we chose instructor for that one. But uh, as long as it's spelled the same throughout, it, it'll it work. Old inst. And just to confirm, because I'm, Again, I, I wasn't consistent. I'm going to double click Update Instructor and make sure it highlights where I think it should. Yep. So with those three extra lines, instead of going out to the console, we will actually put them into those boxes. So there's the code, and up here on the corner you might see, I'm going to click on the last row, and then the fields update. So now they're pre-populated for us. They're pre-populated for the user, and then they're going to spell the, the items properly and update. And 
and they won't misspell some piece of the data. So try that, click, save it and run it, and click the edit button. You don't need to see the console now, but you should see that in those boxes it automatically populates. And so if I wanted to go back to edit English 1 and then change that to Smith Jr., it's already filled in the proper CRN slash ID, the title, and now I'm updating the instructor, updates, that still works, that should still work, and then um, let's say I want to edit class 222, there are limits which I'll show you in a moment, let's say I'm populating that and that's English 2 but that's actually uh, Jones the second, it updates. The limit of this is, well, Actually, this should be class 223 instead of 222. We've got 123 for level 1, 223 for level 2, and 323 for level 3. I want to change the ID. Here's where we reach a, a limit of this method. Uh, this is when we beta test it and such. Okay, I want to I want to edit this row. So I click edit. This should actually be 223. Everything should be the same. It should be 223. Update. Pop up. 223 does not exist. There is no class that is 223. That's what it's telling us. Therefore, we can't update. We're trying to, to the database, add. Remember, we do db put to create a brand new uh, class and also db put to update. But the difference between update is we include, in, we include a revision. So there's nothing to revise. There is no CRN223. So this is one of the issues that we get here. And for, for this beta testing and such, there's other ways that we can see how this is, that this could be broken. And that comes from the whole beta testing phase. But for the moment, if you're able to click and edit an existing class, um, or delete an existing class, on this one, we do. I am going to keep it that you, the person, has to type the C, the, the number here. I don't want them to accidentally click here and delete because there's no safeguard. As soon as I click delete, it's gone, and there's no undo. That all of that great stuff about undo and are you sure, all of that is built into the interface, the user experience, and a lot of testing it and checking if else, if else, and all of that. It's not automatic, so that's why I'm keeping the delete. A little bit more manual than the update. If I misspell this over and over, it's not a big deal. I can go back in and edit it as many times as I want. It doesn't matter to pouch. The data is still going to be there. Fine. But if I do go in and do delete 125, that is going to be permanent. I do want, are you sure? I need to make something happen before that button actually deletes it, if else and such conditional statements which we might get to but if it works at this point let's take our let's take one more break and um, make sure it's working for everyone and then we'll go on